Hey guys, post-race Jimmy here. We're gonna go find some drivers and some competitors maybe, and also some watchers and get an idea of their opinions. Of course, big, big drama at the end of this FIA DG World Tour event, Nations Cup here at New York. So we wanna get some thoughts on it, see if we can get any uh, juicy goss, anything like that. Let's go, have, go for a walk. Adam, how you doing, mate? I'm gonna come and Good. put a microphone on your face. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, you know why I'm here and what I'm gonna to talk to you about. Yeah. What do you make of the incident? You know, if that was in real life, you would, you could kill someone. You know, he was he was 40 percent throttle up radion. Um, there's one race in line. Where's Mikel gonna go? Igor knows what he's doing. He's he's, he's smart. You know, we saw it the lap before where he's pulled over and let Mikel go and then get the slipstream back back past him. He knows what he's doing. Um, Mikel's hit him up the back and then it's an easy win for Igor then and. Uh, you can't do that thing, it's dangerous. Well, do you think that five seconds was uh, enough of a penalty for that? I mean, I kind of expect not to see one, but we've got five seconds yet, was that enough? I don't think so, no. I think it's just as bad as what Cody did. Um, you know, you d you're deliberately making a making a movement to block someone from overtaking you. This is as it's, it's blatant as that. Um, and I think if Mikel would have got past, he'd have had the soft ties in the, mid in the uh, second sector to pull away. Um, Mikel had the pace, his rear tyres were starting to go but after then he couldn't really get back up to the the back of Igor's car but I think he'd have, I think he'd have done it but you know as soon as you make a move like that you deny any, um, you deny the possibility of that happening you know that fight so I, I think it's bang out of order. Do you think it sets a precedent of what we can now expect in future events if that's okay then no, what do you think? I mean. It definitely sets a precedent, especially when they say in the driver's briefing this morning, who wants harsher penalties? We all put our hands up, and then you get five seconds for something which in real life would possibly get you a race ban. It's, it's not right. Thanks so much, Adam, for talking to us no and that opinion there. Adam, very firm opinion there that that isn't correct. I've just noticed someone else that called him I love being on camera. It's Cy Bishop. Hello, Cy Bishop. I, I can see you're, you're gagging for it, as you always are. So, uh, so Cy, um, I've asked a question to Adam. I'm going to ask a question to you. What did you make of the incident between Fraga and Mick? It was a bit dicey, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a hard one because Fraga obviously signals intentions the like before. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know, you can't do that in rear racing, can you? And beyond that, I think, like Mick said in the in, in the very awkward interview for you, Jimmy, um, that... I enjoyed it, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was great for everybody, apart from probably you guys. Um, yeah, he just said that he races people fair, and there's only some kind of, like, it seems like if you want to win, you kind of have to step on the people to get to the next level, do you know what I mean? I'd, I kind of agree more with what Mick says about it, but I guess everybody's going to have their own opinion, aren't they? Of course, Fraga now takes essentially two places to the world, of, of the world final and denies Mick that automatic qualification. Do you reckon that should be different? Do you reckon that if someone's already gone through, they should then give that to second place? Or do you think that kind of cheapens what it is to win one of these events? Probably the latter. I think you always got to, if you want to qualify for the world final, you've got to beat the best, is my thinking. Because if, if you qualify without having to beat Igor, then, I mean, at the end of the thing, you're going to have to beat him probably to win the world title, aren't you? Um, I guess you've just got to try and learn from these races, but I don't know what Mick will have learned from this race, and I don't know what we'll see in a couple of weeks' time, but I guess we'll see, won't we? Yeah, well, I think Sai shares the opinion of many people here. Thank you, Sai. Great no worries, to have a Sai Bishop there. Tota, uh, manufacturer winner from uh, Nürburgring. So let's see if we can find someone else to bother. Let's head down there. We've got lots of competitors down here. I think it's probably a good idea to ask one of them. Donald. Hello, Donald. Come down here, my friend. Yeah. Donald is one of our French commentators. He uh, speaks in a language I can't understand. Donald, um, what did you make of the last race then, Nations Cup final? How was it for you? It was amazing. Uh, of course, yeah, the, the problem between uh, Izal and uh, Fraga was important. I'm very sad for Izal. He's uh, unlucky every time and uh, I really love uh, this pilot. But uh, to be honest, uh, this semi-final with uh, our friends Ryan was so a uh, blast, so uh, yeah. emotional. Uh, I, I enjoyed so much this event. Amazing. So for those who don't know, of course, in the uh, rapid charge race, uh, Darush, I think, ended up finishing fifth in the end in the rapid charge and so close to getting through, but did a fantastic job mm. in semi-final B as well. And of course, Coque Lopez, oh, yeah. finally a third. I'm, I'm sure he's pretty happy with that. 
It's a, a palate who is uh, growing uh, really faster. We saw it uh, the first time uh, in Madrid uh, last year, and now he proved every time that uh, he's a pilot that we can count on. And uh, I really love uh, his skills, but uh, his mind, his uh, spirit is really a good racer. I love him. It seems that way, and he knows how to drive a Group B car, apparently, which is you wouldn't expect to see that here. Thank you so much, Donald. Great to hear your opinions. I spotted someone I want to talk to. I don't want to talk to me on that. We have in front of us Mr. WTF1. He, he looks away. Oh no, here it comes. This is Matt Gallagher. I wonder if I saw you talking. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt has uh, been here for the entirety of New York event. First of all, Matt, what's this whole thing been like for you? It's been awesome. Uh, I genuinely didn't really know what to expect when I came here, but um, the whole production is unbelievable. Um, you know, your, your guys' work's amazing. I think the game as well is just great. I don't know what it is about it, but it's so immersive to watch, and the replays are great. You get so much information, and I've been glued to the screens uh, ever since, really. Thank you so much, Matt. It's uh, great to see you here. Are we, we going to see you again? Absolutely, if you'll have me. <laughs> I won't, but maybe I will. Thank you, Matt. Good to Thank see you, you mate. <laughs> right, there's one more person I'd like to speak to. He said that his, uh, to me earlier on that his opinion was neutral, but I don't believe that for a second. Uh, we have, uh, I can see him up here. Uh, you guys know him, of course, as Super GT. Uh, Guardian of the Shadow Realm, <laughs> apparently. I'd like to have a quick word with him before we start, um, just because, well, I want to see what he thinks of this. Actually, on the way there, I reckon we could speak to Nick. Nick McMillan, see that I'm coming back round now. I've just yeah. going in a full circle. <laughs> Nick McMillan. Really I don't know, Nick. I don't know. We've got uh, one good subject. Um, what uh, what kind of socks are you wearing? <laughs> what kind of socks am I wearing? Yeah. Just some uh, basic black socks. I feel like it just gets the job. Basic done. black. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So, incident. Incident. What do you reckon? Um, to my knowledge, from the data that I've heard, is that he lifted twice. So. Um, I'm pretty sure it's flat through there as well, so I think he should have played it um, a little smarter if he's going to make that move. That's okay. You know, you want to manipulate the driver behind you, um, which is fine. Um, but yeah, it was a little too deliberate. Um, if this was real racing, um, that would have caused a major incident, so I think the call was fair. Um, I don't know what it is on Mikhail's side um, after that, if he gave up or if it was fuel um, exactly, so unfortunately, you know, I can't make the call at the end of the day, but yeah, I think it was fair, and I think Igor should have raced a little more fairly, um, you know, but at the same time, he did did his job, um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I think this is a big learning moment just um, for the stewards, for the drivers, um, so we'll see what happens moving forward. So here's something I haven't asked anyone yet. I'll ask you this as Mr. Real Life Racing Driver. Of course, this, as much as we like to say, it isn't real life racing. It's in terms of out there actually racing cars around a circuit. So do you think that we should be applying the same penalties in that aspect or do you think that we should take the stance this is in fact a simulator and you know there aren't these big ramifications yeah. for big crashes or do you think that we should be trying to mirror what we see in the real world? Um, I mean I think it says it on the, on the jacket, you know, yeah. the real driving simulator. I think if we're going to go for the real driving simulator and we want to have the FAA involved, I think we should apply what we have in the FAA rulebook. Um, to the simulation, you know, I think that's what we love about it um, is that, you know, it is real, it is pure um, and we want to race, you know, cleanly and have good sportsmanship um, and I think that creates better racing at the end of the day and if it's consistent, you know, I think it's easier to understand as a fan um, and easier to understand, understand as, a, as a driver. Thank you very much, Nick, for that uh, good opinion. We'll move on from you now. Have a good one. Okay. Um, I still want to talk to him. Is he, is he, is he, no, he's up there talking to uh, someone. Oh, you're you interviewing go. him? Do you mind? Interviewing me? Oh, interviewing me or him? We'll Steve quick if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Discover sorry. a second. So, Steve, Super GT, Shadow Realm Guardian. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask you a nice question before I ask you Thank a nice you. question. Um, your first event yep. at Gran Turismo, what did you make of it? Absolutely amazing. Really good. Um, I've raced so many of these guys uh, online. Um, I know them from social media. Great to meet them, for real. Um, Great to just be involved. Mm. Just great to be part of it. Great to visit an amazing city. Um, yeah, just thank you to everyone who supported the channel. I suppose to make this possible. Yeah, I'll, I'll take some uh, some credit in that. as all me. No, it wasn't really. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you the last question now. So we've of course had an incident between Mick and mm. Fraga at the end. I know you said you were neutral on this um, because you're just going to be a bit bothersome for me, yes. but. Anything you, re you you can share with us? Mm, well, it does seem very shady to be lifting off during Eau Rouge. Mm. It's, it's not... I mean, if he wanted to go behind, which he did a lap before, I mm. think, 
to let Mikhail go in front. It's, I think it's a fair tactic to let someone go through and follow them for slipstream, for fuel saving. But there's a time and a place, mm. and he could have done it better. He could have done it way before at the last horse hairpin, or he could have done it down the straight, the Kemmel straight. So there are better ways to have done what he did. Uh, so. Would you think it would have been fairer if perhaps he had like a massive short shift and didn't let, let off the throttle? Because it would be the same sort of scenario. I mean, you'd still be accelerating, but it would achieve a similar effect. Would you reckon that would be all right compared to letting off the power? Maybe, yeah. Um, it's hard to say exactly what he wanted to do. Hmm. Like, it, It's hard to know the exact thought process of what he wanted to do there. So it's always hard to say what he could have done or what he couldn't have done, but... Either way, he's won it, and yeah. even if it's uh, on the edge of the rules, he's made it work. Well, there you go. That was uh, Super GT's opinion. Thank you so much, Steve, for that, and I appreciate you giving me an actual opinion instead <laughs> of just uh, getting on the fence. Well, I think that is a nice comprehensive roundup of uh, of the events. Here. Good to get some different opinions of what's going on outside of myself and Tom. Uh, it'll be very interested to hear what you guys think and whatever platform this ends up on. Let us know in the comment below, and uh, yeah, let us know if you want to see more stuff like this. Take care. See you later.